The thing that the Harry Potter series is formed around, especially in the later books, is the prophecy between Harry and Voldemort, and how Harry is the chosen one. It's not fully explored in the movie, so in this video I'm going to explain everything there is to know about the prophecy, and how it connects three characters together. The prophecy was told a little bit before Harry was born, when Dumbledore was looking for a new divination teacher for Hogwarts. He had an interview with a woman named Sybil Trelawney, and he met her at the Hog's Head, which was actually owned by Albus's brother, Aberforth. The meeting took place in a room on the upper floor. Dumbledore agreed to meet with her because she was related to a well-known seer named Cassandra. After a few minutes of the interview, however, Dumbledore realized that she did not have the same gift as Cassandra, and he concluded the meeting saying nicely that she wasn't the right person for the job. He started to leave, but as he walked away, a harsh, hoarse voice came out of Trelawney as she spoke. The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord approaches, born to those who have thrice defied him, born as the seventh month dies, and the Dark Lord will mark him as his equal, but he will have power the Dark Lord knows not and either must die at the hand of the other, for neither can live while the other survives." This was a real prediction, perhaps the first real prediction that Trelawney ever made. While she was in the middle of telling the prophecy, Severus Snape, one of Voldemort's Death Eaters, was listening at the door. He heard half of it but was thrown out of the bar before he heard the last half. He then went to his master Voldemort and told him everything that he heard, but because he didn't hear the entire prophecy, it would lead to Voldemort's ultimate downfall. We all know that the prophecy is about Harry and Voldemort, but the prophecy actually could have been about two different boys, Harry Potter and Neville Longbottom. So let's break the prophecy down and I'll explain as we go. The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord approaches. The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord approaches. All this means is that whoever the prophecy is about that will be able to defeat Voldemort is about to be born. Born to those who have thrice defied him. This means whomever the prophecy is about their parents defied Voldemort three times. Rowling explained this saying, if you're counting, which I do, anytime you arrested one of his henchmen, anytime you escaped him, anytime you thwarted him, that's what he's looking for. And both couples qualify because they were both fighting. So both set of parents, whether that be James and Lily, Harry's parents, or Frank and Alice, Neville's parents, were both in the Order of the Phoenix. So both easily did at least three of those things that would count as three times that they defied Voldemort. In my opinion, one of the reasons Voldemort chose to go after Harry could possibly be because Voldemort tried to recruit James and Lily to join the Death Eaters, and they both refused, which is defying Voldemort far more than the Longbottoms ever did. Now the next part says, born as the seventh month dies. This means that the person the prophecy is about was born at the end of July, which both Harry and Neville were. Neville was born on July 30th, while Harry was born on July 31st. Now this is where it gets a bit complicated. And the Dark Lord shall mark him as his equal. The Dark Lord will mark him as his equal. This part of the prophecy is probably the most important part, and this is what determines whether the prophecy will be about Harry or Neville. Whichever boy Voldemort decides to mark as his equal, meaning which boy he decides to kill, it will set the prophecy in stone and make it about the boy he goes after. Voldemort decided to go after Harry, and when he did this, he marked Harry as his equal. Dumbledore stated, he chose not the pure blood, which according to him, was the only wizard worth being or knowing, but the half-blood like him. He saw himself inside of Harry. When Voldemort tried to kill Harry, he physically marked him, giving the lightning-shaped scar on his forehead. But he also made Harry more of his equal than anyone even thought possible. He gave Harry powers that had Voldemort not tried to kill him, Harry would never have had. He transferred some of his powers to you the night he gave you that scar including the ability to speak parcel tongue, meaning he can speak to snakes, or the ability to look into Voldemort's mind. It also gave Harry the ability to sense Voldemort's presence, or when Voldemort felt a great swell of emotions, because any time that either of those things happened, Harry's scar would start to hurt. And all of this is because Voldemort tried to kill Harry that night, when he marked him as his equal, and made the prophecy set in stone. The next part says, he will have power the Dark Lord knows not. The power that Voldemort doesn't know, and really doesn't even understand, is the power of love. Harry had a protection from Voldemort the second his mother stepped in front of him and sacrificed herself to save her only child. She sacrificed herself for you, and that kind of act leaves a mark. No, no, this kind of mark cannot be seen. It lives in your very skin. What is it? Love. 
Voldemort truly doesn't understand the power of love, and it physically hurts him to feel the emotion, which we saw in the Order of the Phoenix when he possessed Harry. Uh You'll never know love, or friendship. He fled Harry's body because it physically hurt him to feel the amount of love that Harry has in his heart. It's the weapon that the Dark Lord knows not, because he doesn't understand it. Harry uses this to his advantage, and uses it to defeat Voldemort. Even in one of their final confrontations, Harry uses the power of love to save his allies, friends, and classmates when he sacrifices himself, giving them the same protection that his mother gave him. Voldemort once again not having any clue about the power of love. And now the last part of the prophecy. Either must die at the hand of the other, for neither can live while the other survives. It means one of us is going to have to kill the other in the end. So Voldemort can only be killed by Harry, and Harry can only be killed by Voldemort. There's actually an interesting fan theory made by a user named HP Wombat, and they say that since one of them has to kill the other, after Harry killed Voldemort, according to the prophecy, he killed the only person that would ever be able to kill him, making Harry the boy who lived forever. It's an interesting theory, but I doubt that's what Rowling had in her mind. Maybe once the prophecy is fulfilled and one of them is killed, then it's over and done with. It doesn't apply anymore. Anyone can kill Harry again. Anyway, when Snape told Voldemort what he had heard, he had only heard the first half that stated, Born to those who have thrice defied him, and born as the seventh month dies. So Voldemort had no idea about the second half that talked about marking him as his equal, and the power that Harry would have that he didn't know about. He went to kill Harry, not knowing the risk of what he was doing. So he thought he was just eliminating his one and only threat, and fulfilling the prophecy before it became a problem for him. The prophecy was put in the Department of Mysteries, which is located in the Ministry of Magic. It originally didn't have a name on it, but once Voldemort tried to kill Harry, they put Harry's name on it. Harry, it's got your name on it. The prophecy ends up getting destroyed in the events of the Order of the Phoenix. But the prophecy lived on when Dumbledore extracted the memory of him hearing the prophecy for the first time to show Harry. Harry is branded as the chosen one to the wizarding world. Harry gets this name when it starts to leak to the public that the prophecy exists, after the events that took place in the Department of Mysteries at the end of Order of the Phoenix. At the end of the series, Harry faces his destiny as the Chosen One, and finally fulfilled the prophecy that controlled him for all his life. Thanks so much for watching guys, and thank you so much for the support. I'm going to keep putting out Harry Potter videos as much as I can, and I actually just started a Twitter, so I'll link that, and I'll give you guys updates on what videos I'm making. I'll interact with you guys, and you guys can give me suggestions of what you want me to make. And I'll also follow like comic book news, Harry Potter news, Star Wars news, whatever you guys want. And I'll keep you updated on that too on the Twitter page. So links right here if you want to follow my Twitter. And I can't thank you guys enough for all the support. Brilliant.